thank you very much, Trinket and AG. Wasn't that a wonderful presentation? You know, it makes me want to go out now and go birding. But of course, we have to stay here with you. Then you just enjoy that. So give them some love. Yeah, push that heart button and and give them a like. Trinket and AG, dapat meron kayong YouTube videos na. So watch out for Trinket and Adri's YouTube channel. Okay, so let's proceed. Um, well, after those two presentations, we're going to talk about a, well, it's a question that we're always asked. What do you do with when you find a bird that is injured? Or what do you do? How, uh, what do you do with birds that you find on the ground? How do you rescue birds? So these are some of the things that we usually uh, are asked. So um, with us now is Dr. Lala Espanola. She is a wildlife biologist. Right now, she's a teacher in the University of the Philippines. She has been birding since 1999. Um, and actually one of her, her claim to fame really is she was one, she discovered a new species in the Philippines, the Kalayan rail a few years ago. So her interest in birds, she says, was sparked when she learned that many of them were threatened with extinction. And they are also very inspiring for her because they are marvelously intelligent, that's what she says, and diverse in color, sound, and character. So for her presentation this morning, she would like everyone to know the very first steps to take when rescuing a bird. So let's play the video. Ano ang dapat gawin kung may makitang inakay ng ibon sa lupa? Paano ba ang pagsagip ng ibon na nasaktan, may tilay o sakit? Ang tabayan ang sagot sa presentasyong ito. Kung may nakita kang ibon, ang unang dapat gawin ay alamin kung kailangan nitong sagipin. Kung ang ibon ay may sakit, nasaktan o di kay may tilay, Kailangan itong sagipin kung siya ay naatake ng isang hayo, siya ay nakita na nasa bunganga ng pusa o aso o di kaya ay nakalambitin sa isang bakod, kung ito ay nasa lupa at hindi gumagalaw at hindi nakakalipad kahit na lapitan no? at madali siyang damputin. At kung yung mata niya ay nakasara, ito ay namamaga o di kaya may sugat. At hindi niya kayang iwagaywa yung kanyang pakpak. At meron siyang uh, halata na uh, injury no? o pilay sa kanyang mga limbs. No? Uh, yung kanyang paa ay nakabitin, ang pakpak ay nakalaylay at hindi pantay. Siya ay uh, mahina at nanginginig at Mayroong ebidensya ng dugo o di kaya may sugat na nakikita. Ang paraan ng pagsagip ng inakay ng ibon ay nagkakaiba kung ito ay hatchling, nestling, or fledgling. Ang hatchling o nestling ay kailangan itong sagipin. No? Ano yung hatchling? Ito yung wala pa halos balahibo. No? Uh, manipis ang down feathers niya. It's in the early stages of feather growth. Tapos, kailangan pang upuan ng nanay para manatili siyang warm yung kanyang katawan. Habang yung nestling naman, ay nakikita na yung umpisa ng pagtubo ng kanyang balahibo. Uh, meron ng konting tumutubo na balahibo sa pakpak, yung ngunit hindi pa siya marunong tumayo, maghap o di kaya maglakad. So kung may makita kang hatchling or nestling, kailangang hanapin mo yung pugad niya. Usually, nakikita ito sa paligid. No? Sa mga bushes or di kaya sa mga puno na naandun sa paligid. Kung mahanap mo ito, kailangan mong ibalik lang yung inakay doon sa pugad para yung mga magulang nito ay maka-resume no? 
uh, magpanumbalik ang kanilang pag-aalaga doon sa bata, doon sa inakay. No? Pero kung hindi mo mahanap yung pugad, no, o di kaya ang pugad ay napakalayo at mahirap siyang abutin, napakataas, no? pwede kang maghanap ng isang lagayan na kung saan mayroong uh, rags, no? o trapo, na pwede mong ilagay doon sa loob o di kaya straw no o kahit ano lang kahit ano na material na dry no? so ilagay mo doon ang nestling o di kaya inakay no or hatchling sa loob ng lagayan at i ilagay mo sa pinakamataas na lugar no na pwede mong abutin kasi uh, posible na yung mga magulang no ng uh, uh, ibo na yon ay naandun lang lamang sa paligid at uh, pwede niyang balikan yung inakay no So kapag naibalik mo na doon bantayan mo yung uh, inakay ng mga isang oras tingnan mo kung balikan siya ng kanyang nanay no o di kaya ng parent no posibleng tatay din yung nagfi-feed um, kung hindi siya balikan kailangan mo siyang dalhin sa isang rescue center alam na natin ang pagkakaiba ng hatchling at nestling ngayon titingnan naman natin kung ano ang fledgling at kung paano ito matutulungan kung ito ay may injury o di kaya ay may pilay Ang fledgling ay isang inakay na kakatubo pa lang ang balahin ko. Meron siyang malambot na down feathers at yung kanyang buntot at yung pakpak niya ay may maiksi na balahibo. Kaya niya nang umupo ng matuwid, dumapo, lumukso at ikampay ang pakpak. Ngunit siya ay dependent pa rin sa kanyang mga magulang para sa kanyang survival. Kadalasan, Ang fledgling ay nakikitang mag-isa lamang nasa lupa. No? Ngunit ang mga magulang nito, kadalasan din ay naandyan lamang sa paligid. No? Nasa puno o di kaya ay naandyan sa mga halaman sa paligid. At ito ay bumababa para pakainin ang inakay mga once every hour or so. No? Ang fledgling ay kailangang sagipin kung nasa, nasa lupa siya. At nanganganib ito sa mga tao, sa ibang mga hayop, at ibang mga ibon. At yung kanyang mga magulang ay hindi nakikita sa paligid o di kaya tumigil ng pakainin ang inakay. So kailangan na siyang sagipin. Ngunit ang isang fledgling o inakay ay hindi dapat i-rescue o sagipin kung ito ay lumulukso sa uh, lupa uh, at siya ay ligtas sa mga tao, sa mga hayop at ibang mga ibon. At yung mga magulang niya ay nagpapakain sa kanya. Pusibli na ang inakay ay learning pa lang, no? uh, natututo pa lang itong lumipad. Kaya naandun siya sa lupa. So kung nakita nyo, may nakita kayo na isang healthy o di kaya uh, malusog na fledgling o inakay, ang, ang dapat na gawin doon ay lumayo lamang. No? Walk away from the bird. Kung may makita kang isang ibon na adult na nasa lupa at hindi ito lumalayo kapag ikaw ay lumapit, Ang ibon na ito ay nangangailangan ng tulong, no? Posible na siya ay may sakit o di kaya injury at kailangan dalhin kaagad-agad sa isang veterinaryo o isang lisensyadong wildlife rehabilitator. Walang dahilan na at illegal din ang manghuli ng isang ibon na adult na walang injury o illness. Kung ito ay malusog na ibon at wala namang mga sakit o di kaya ay pilay, iligal ang panghuli ng ibon na yan. 
No? So, wag dapat hulihin. So, kapag may mahanap ka na injured na ibon, kailangan ilagay ito sa isang uh, cardboard uh, or shoebox or a small pet carrier. No? Yung crate na nilalagyan ng mga pusa at aso, pwede ilagay doon. No? Um, at saka kung ang ibon ito ay mayroong pilay sa paa o pakpak, pwede lagyan ito ng uh, tuwalya no? sa paligid niya para malimit yung movement niya at hindi lalong uh, lumala ang kanyang pilay. No? Doon sa mga maliliit naman na mga ibon, pwede kang gumamit ng paper bag. No? As long as lagyan mo ng mga air holes. No? Butasan siya ng maliliit na butas para makahinga siya. No? Yung ibon. Tapos ilagay yung carrier sa isang cool and safe place. No? Malayo sa mga tao na tumitingin doon para hindi siya ma-stress. No? Uh, karamihan kasi ng mga ibon, uh, they go into shock very easily when injured. Kung nagkakaroon siya na injury, they go into shock. No? And sometimes, they die from the shock. No? Kung ang ibon na ito ay bumangga sa isang glass na window no? at siya ay buhay pa rin, no at uh, uh, hindi naman malala ang kanyang ano uh, ang impact sa kanya no baka kailangan niya lang ng konting panahon para siya ay maka, maka regain ng kanyang senses no at uh, para lumipad palayo no uh, so that it may be able to fly away um, so bigyan lang siya ng panahon na maka regain ng senses niya no na malayo sa mga predators, no, ng mga pusa at aso. You may also want to protect yourself, no? Um, you can wear gloves, no, because some birds may stab you with their beaks, no, slice you with their claws and slap with their wings to protect themselves. Kahit na may sakit sila, no? Mga ibon paminsan, meron ding mga parasites and they also carry diseases, no? So you have to protect yourself by wearing gloves. So if you have already found the bird, no, and uh, uh, and you have prepared the carrier, pwede mo siyang hulihin sa pamamagitan ng paglagay ng manipis na sheet or towel doon sa ibon para maggrab mo siya at may ilagay sa carrier, no? Ayan. So, you cover it with a light sheet or towel no? para mas madali siyang ma makuha at ma-transfer doon sa carrier. No? Do not force feed or give water to the bird. No? Kailangan idalhin ang ibon sa labas uh, at saka i-open yung box mga every 15 minutes, no? to see kung pwede nang lumipad yung ibon. Dahil kung if it, it has regained its senses, no, and uh, medyo na napawi na yung pagod niya, pwede na siyang lumipad. No? And then you can contact a wildlife rehabilitator near you. No? Uh, kung hindi pa rin siya nakakalipad yung ibon. So pwede mo na rin dalhin sa wildlife uh, rescue center or contact a wildlife rehabilitator. Now, before I end, I would like to show you the ringer's grip. This is the, the way to correctly handle a bird when you need to hold it in order to transfer it from one container to another or carrier. And also, if you want to attach a ring band to the bird, no? So, the back of the bird faces the palm of the hand and it lessens the injury to the bird. Okay, so good luck with your bird rescue efforts and uh, happy birding! All right. Thank you very much, Doc Lana. Uh, now I'd like to ask the, the three speakers to turn on their video. I think the very important message that 
we'd like to share. Of course, Lala just showed us how to rescue a bird, but I think the main message really is the best thing to do for birds is just to watch them and not catch them. Okay, so hello, Pete. You can unmute yourselves. Pete, Adri, Trinket, and Lala. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. So we have some questions actually from, from our audience. So I'm going to read some of them. Some of them have been answered at the chat box, but maybe we can, you know, it's worth repeating some of them. I think there's one question on, uh, yeah, recommending bird feeders. I think this is a very important question that you might want to uh, elaborate on. I think you answered some of it. So actually, we they want to know how to make bird baths, but uh, I'd also like to ask if this is something that is essential and how will it help birds? Maybe Adrian Trinket can answer that first. So about, uh, about bird feeders, we actually don't uh, encourage uh, putting up bird feeders because uh, they can attract uh, pests and uh, spread disease if not properly managed. So we would rather recommend uh, providing water uh, using uh, bird bats. No, mas madali rin siyang ma-maintain kasi papalitan mo lang yung water. Tapos uh, just regularly change the water and it's a good way to attract uh, birds in your backyard. Especially during the summer when it's very hot and the birds look for water. Uh, we think that well, for our in our experience, the bird baths have been very helpful for us uh, to attract birds to the garden. We we don't have any feeders. We realize that not everyone has the logistics to, to plant <laughs> to plant like a forest <laughs> in their backyard. Uh, so uh, any greenery actually can help attract birds because it's really a place mm -hmm. for them to feel safe and. Uh, and seek shelter. So even if it's just a potted plant, a bushy plant, that will help also on top of water. Yeah, how about Pete? Anything you can say about bird feeders, bird baths, what's done in the UK, or are you doing anything like that in Davao? Uh, I'm not. I Back in England, uh, throughout Europe and USA, there is a lot of bird feeding. Uh, and it's very useful there because we, we have hard winters and there's a lack of food for wild birds. Mm -mm. We don't have hard winters in Davao. Um, <laughs> so I think it is best to, to plant native fruiting bushes, trees. Yeah. Uh, but I have recently installed a couple of bird baths in my garden and they're doing quite well. I look forward to taking some videos to use in future presentations like Adrian Trinket. Okay, uh, how about Lala? Anything you can say about that? Um, I think just to add that there are so many native species of plants that you can pl uh, you can you know put in your garden, uh, grow in your garden, that can attract so many birds. Um, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, I've I've actually put um, just an outdoor pond, uh, tubs lang siya, tubs with fish inside. And there are a lot of birds that actually get attracted to it. So any body of water, kahit na tabo nga lang yan, uh, pupuntahan yun ng ibo, no? uh, especially during the height of summer. So um, yun lang siguro, that's all I can share about that. Right. Uh, well, there are actually follow-up questions. One question is about whether uh -huh. or Sorry, yes, Adri, yeah. go ahead. Actually, if they're interested in knowing what uh, native plants they can use you know, mm. to attract birds in their backyard, they can join the Birdwatch Philippines community group. There's a pinned yeah. post mm -hmm. there about native plants and backyard gardens. So, oh, I remember yeah. your talk about that, Adri. Oh, yes. Yeah, so everyone just go to the Birdwatch Philippines Facebook group and you can see that... Uh, that's very useful resource. There's a, but there's a follow-up question about how to keep mosquitoes and larvae away from bird baths and ponds. Uh, who would like to? Okay, yeah, you can, yes. 
So, yeah, like Lala, like what Lala said, we also keep fish in our ponds. Just simple, hardy fish that yes. uh, can, yeah, that don't need much uh, maintenance. maintenance. <laughs> yeah, that, that not maintenance. And they keep the mosquito larvae away. But that's because we have planted uh, bird baths. They're really like mini ponds. If you just keep a shallow bowl of water, like a basin or the catch plate for pots, it's very easy to just throw out the water every day or every two days and change the water. And you can use, you can use tap water, you can use rain water, um, as long as it's clean water, it doesn't really matter. All right, so I hope that answers your question. So we can leave the issue of bird bath feeders behind. So there's a question on wildlife pets. Uh, and I guess the related question is, um, what centers, uh, who do we bring our rescued birds to? So, Lala? Um, actually, here in the Metro Manila, the, the go-to place is the Ninoy Aquino Parks and Wildlife because there is a wildlife rescue center there. Um, they have vets that are trained to handle uh, wildlife injuries because not all vets are able to actually handle those kinds of um, cases, no? Um, so, kailangan train din sila sa wildlife. Um, but in the provinces, if you go to the local DNR office, they will usually have a vet that is uh, assigned to do wildlife rescues per province. Um, that's all I know. Pero yun, kasi... Some of these facilities, well, they just hold a small office. So, walang hindi masyadong, uh, hindi masyadong well equipped, no? especially in the provinces. But that's the reason why I'm saying na you have to discriminate between uh, cases that need help and cases that do not. So, many of those. Uh, birds that you sometimes see on the ground should not be rescued at all. Um, so, kung may kita mo siya healthy naman, na andun lang siya on the ground, hopping about, it's probably learning how to fly. So, unless there are visible signs of injury or disease or something like that, um, just leave the birds no? <laughs> on the where were you found them? Yun lang siguro, Anna. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very clear. Yeah, so the best thing to do is just to let them be, and mm -hmm. that will really help them. Um, Pete, there's a question about binoculars. What are the best binoculars that you can recommend? And of course, Adri Trinket and Lala can also answer that question. Well, the best binoculars are probably Swarovski's, but I don't think that's uh, the question that's being asked because they're very, very expensive. They cost a couple of hundred thousand pesos. Uh, the, the best design of binoculars, I would always recommend roof prisms because they are more likely to be waterproof. Uh, that's over the older Pora prism designs. Uh, Adri's going for demonstrations. Yes. He's so well prepared. Um, the size and power of your binoculars, uh, eight or 10 times magnification, don't get taken in by uh, internet websites that show off about 50 times magnification. That's way too high. Um, right. Cost of binoc binoculars, it depends on your budget. And as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, uh, these days through Shopee, you can get direct from China a reasonable pair of uh, eight by 32 roof prism binoculars for less than 2,000 pesos. Yes, thank you. Uh, as they say, nasa Lazada yan, or Shopee. Uh, Adrian Trinket, show the binoculars uh, that you're holding right now. and let, uh, Tell us about them. So this is the, what Pete was saying. These are the roof binoculars. And these are the uh, prism binoculars. Coro, in, coro. Oh, coro, sorry. Coro, coro, coro prism. prism binoculars. So 
I, we just want to add na some brands like uh, uh, this one is a Kenko. It's uh, not so expensive. It's a good start. We started with Kenko binoculars. It's locally available in uh, some binoculars and outdoor shops, mm-hmm. optic shops mm-hmm. here in Manila. I okay. put them in the chat box. Right. So Lana, I can interrupt anything? five more minutes. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, there's a last question on uh, if birds recognize the human yes, face. So I see that. So, um, there are actually cases where uh, birds can recognize a particular person uh, because I, th- these uh, these cases usually happen if. Uh, well, uh, there, there's just one story I'd like to share then. Um, there was a researcher who was working on a bird nest, trying to measure the bird's uh, development from young to adult. And what happened was um, the parent of that baby bird recognized this person. And uh, every time this person passes by the nest or near the area, it would attack this person, no? the parent. So it's possible for a bird to actually recognize one particular person. Um, this happened, I think, somewhere in, in Europe. So uh, I'm not sure if some birds here locally are capable of doing something like that. But um, that was for... Uh, uh, I think that was a uh, magpie that was uh, doing that. So they're really from the family of birds that are very intelligent. Uh, so yun, yun lang siguro ang masagot ko dun. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, that's good. Well, um, I think, well, Pete and Adri can say something about that. Uh, we will end this session soon. I'm so sorry because, you know, this is getting more interesting. But I'd like to have one message from each of you before we end this wonderful session. So maybe Pete first and then Adri Trinket and then Lala. What is your main message or, you know, something to leave behind to our audience this morning? Pete? Uh, I'd like to give an update on where I finished my presentation uh, um, in that yesterday I went out and did a big day. Oh, okay. Today is is big day, bird watching day, but we're all in front of Zoom. Yesterday I went out to try and see as many birds as I could in one day in Davao City. Mm -hmm. My target was 100 and I failed. I recorded recorded 99 species (laughs) in one day. It was a long day. I started at half two in the morning and I finished about 6.30 p.m. My other wow. target was the actual number of birds I would see. And I failed on that one again because I thought I might see 100,000 birds because the first two places I went to were barn swallow roosts. Oh, wow. one of the barn mm-hmm. swallows, winter visitors, sleep on the wires in Kalinan district. And that mm. roost does reach 100,000 birds in December. Last night, I could only find 46,000 or count 46,000 <laughs> only, only, only. 3.30 in the morning. So <laughs> my total number of birds counted throughout the day was, I think, 53,000 birds. Wow. Oh, my, oh my goodness. So That's there amazing. are a lot of birds and a lot of species, even in the city where you live. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. Um, Adrian Trinket? Yeah, maybe from us, just go out and bird and enjoy your birding. Enjoy being outside. There's a lot to see. Even if you're not, a lot to learn. Even if you're not particularly on an errand to go birding, just keep your eyes and ears open and you'll learn a lot and see a lot. Great. Thank you, Lala. Um, I think it's... uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the website of the Wild Bird Club of the Philippines in the, in the community group as well. Surround yourself with birders. Um, that's the fastest way to learn how to bird, fastest way to learn how to rescue birds and to 
to actually share the passion no, for the environment with other people. No? So join a club, join our club. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much for those messages and thank you for a wonderful session one for the 14th Philippine Bird Festival. Thank you, Pete, Adri, Trinket.